Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. We are live in Las Vegas, Nevada at the MGM Grand in front of the Bet MGM Sportsbook. It is Fantasy Football Happy Hour, presented, served by Applebee's, I should say, not presented by Happy. It is actually served by Applebee's. Jay Croucher, Connor Rogers, I'm Matthew Barry, And we want to start today's show with some good news. Not out of the woods yet, but uh, Adam Schefter, my former colleague, uh, tweeting this 53 minutes ago. I'm going to read verbatim. Doctors saw promising signs of progress overnight from DeMar Hamlin, who remained hospitalized in critical condition as of Wednesday morning, according to a friend and business partner of the Buffalo Bills' safety. And so um, our thoughts and prayers continue to be with uh, DeMar and his family. The uh, the GoFundMe for his toy drop is yeah. like continues to explode. It's Over a, six million. It's unbelievable. It's such an amazing outpouring of support. We've seen other organizations and prominent individuals, other teams uh, donate as well. So uh, really just, you know, a really terrific story during a horrific um uh, horrific episode in the history of the NFL. Um, we don't want to uh, minimize uh, DeMar's status, uh, and uh, we certainly are not. But we do know that, um, you know, the NFL yesterday announced that um, there have been no changes made to the Week 18 regular season schedule. The NFL said they're, they're, at least as of now, as of Wednesday morning when we're taping this or we're shooting this, there will be a Week 18 schedule, as you see it here on your screen, the NFL uh, released this NFL update on Bills Bengals game and Week 18 schedule. Uh, the NFL continues to be in regular contact with the medical team caring for Demar Hamlin and also the Bills and Bengals organization and the NFL Players Association. After speaking with both teams and NFLPA leadership, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell informed the clubs today that the Bills Bengals game will not be resumed this week. The NFL has made no decision regarding the possible resumption of the game at a later date. The league has not made any changes to the Week 18 regular season schedule. We will continue to provide additional information as it becomes available. And so I'll start with that. The league has not made any changes to the Week 18 regular season schedule. As a result of that, if they're going to play eight Week 18 games, guys, that means there's going to be fantasy football in Week 18, and that's what our show is going to do. So, uh, again, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with uh, DeMar Hamlin and his family, the entire Bills organization. But... We are a fantasy football show. There's going to be football on Sunday, or this weekend, I should say. So we're going to talk about that. And um, speaking of that, Connor, what we should do is then talk about the rest of that announcement and the fantasy implications. Yeah, there are fantasy implications here, obviously. Uh, we have a Yahoo status update essentially explaining cancellation um, versus continuation. So let's get into all of that. Week 17 and 18 fantasy football status updates. Week 17 standings will update for now, but scoring updates will be applied once a decision regarding the Bills-Bengals game status is made by the NFL. Waivers will be process, processed as normal for leagues playing in Week 18. In the event of a Bills-Bengals game cancellation, if the game is declared final by the NFL and scored as is, meaning the score is finalized as 7-3 to when the game was stopped, all fantasy points will remain as is. If the game is canceled and the stats are zeroed out by the NFL, all fantasy points accumulated in the Bills-Bengals game will be zeroed out to reflect the official record. They will not count, essentially. In the event of the game being continued, if the game resumes at any point in the future, scores will accrue as they normally would for Week 17 matchups. This will impact Week 17 results, and Week 18 matchups may be impacted as necessary. So... Long story short, we right. don't know if this game is going to be played. We don't know if it's going to be canceled, which would negate all of the stats. And the fact is the NFL doesn't have the answers right now if this game would be played after Week 18, which would push everything, essentially probably eliminating the Pro Bowl skills week that's right. in between uh, before the yep. Super Bowl. They do have that padded week. So there's a lot still in play here, guys. Yeah, there, there, there absolutely is. So... I think, and by the way, it's worth noting that, uh, you know, I still have some leagues on ESPN, obviously, and ESPN, uh, they also have an announcement about this, which is basically the same as Yahoo's. The only difference between ESPN and Yahoo is is that they pushed, ESPN pushed waivers back a day. I think it's going to actually run tonight um, as opposed to when it usually runs Tuesday night. So whatever day waivers ran in your league, it's pushed back 
uh, I believe, a day. But certainly check your ESPN-specific league. But basically it's the same thing. And what they're doing is it's a lot of, lot of words that explaining it. But in essence what they're doing is – and by the way, I think they're doing the right thing. In essence what they're saying is we're going to let the NFL dictate how we handle this. Like if, if, the, uh, if the game is resumed at any point in the future – and the game will have played. It'll be counted for week 17, even if it's played in week 19. That that'll count towards your week 17 scores. And so, if you had Josh Allen or Joe Burrow or or Mixon or Diggs or whoever, then those points, even if it was scored in week 19, will be retroactively added to your score, and everything will be updated. Okay, but if they don't play the game, then they don't play the game. That it. it is what it is. And so, um, and my personal take is, it is listen. With the, with the caveat that we've all said, like, none of this is important in the grand scheme of things um, compared to what uh, DeMar Hamlin is going through. But um, I think that that is – I think that's the best solution. I've heard lots of other leagues trying a bunch of different things. I've heard people saying, we're going we're gonna to split the pot. We're just going to declare co-champions. Yeah. I, I've heard people then say, we're going to split the pot. We're going to declare co-champions. And, oh, by the way, we're going to take the league winnings and we're just going to donate it to DeMar's GoFundMe, which I think is an awesome, amazing idea. I've heard other leagues, I'm in one particular league, the league that I mentioned, um, where um, I'm up six, I was up six, this is the league I you know, mentioned uh, on Fantasy Football pregame. I'm up 62 points. I was up 62 points on Rich Rebar at Lord Reeb's, um, who's an awesome analyst and a friend in this dynasty league that's a bunch of fantasy analysts in the industry. I'm up 62. I'm done. He had Burrow and Mixon to go. And so he basically said, like, guys, I, I don't think there was any way I was getting 62 points out of those two guys. So to make this easy on the league, I'm just going to concede. To which everyone else in the league, including me, said, no, no, let, let's just wait to see what the NFL does. Like, if the game plays, the game plays, and we'll figure it out. So I think lovely gesture by, by Rich. Um, so I think it depends on your league, and every league is different. But my personal take, guys, and I want you guys to weigh in here, my personal take is I would follow the, the, the lead of the, the platforms of Yahoo, of ESPN, of the other platforms, and who are ultimately going to follow the lead of the NFL. If the NFL says the final score is 7-3, to three, then Burroughs' touchdown to Boyd counts, right? And the Tyler Bass field goal counts. And if not, if they say it's just a 0-0 game, then as much as that stinks and is awful, it's a 0-0 game. Like... That happens. I mean, you think about think about Kyler Murray. His last he played three plays and basically got a zero, right? And and got injured. T. Higgins a couple of weeks ago played one snap, got a zero. Like it happens in the NFL. It doesn't doesn't happen in a scenario where like ten players get zeros, but it does happen in fantasy football. And it's an awful break. And it's again incredibly insignificant in the real world. But to me, I feel like that's the most fair thing yeah i think it is the only fair thing to defer to the official record that's just the easiest thing to fall back on and like it doesn't yeah it doesn't feel like it's all trivial clearly but it doesn't feel i guess fair in the fantasy context that all these guys get zeros but what's the alternative like this is the only thing that i think makes sense and to your point about kyla murray t higgins yes this is an extremely unique and obviously unfortunate situation but i think that's the only thing that you can really do is just defer to the official record yeah, I think everybody just talking it out is what matters. A, a dynasty league I'm in in the fantasy community, the fantasy playbook, the, everybody got together, had an adult conversation. Uh, there was no hard feelings amongst the two that were in the championship, and they said co-champions and the money's going to DeMar Hamlin's charity. Really nice right. thing to do. Not everybody is in that situation where they're going to be willing to do that, but just talking it out, coming together. And if nobody can agree, this is what you fall back on, what the NFL does, because there's honestly no other option. Yeah, a, a thousand percent. I think that's great. What I personally would do, and as great as it is in your league that the, the two you know the two people in the finals decide to declare themselves yeah. co-champions, for me, I, I, I actually and listen, this wasn't my decision. In the dynasty league that I'm talking about, um, uh, uh, T.J. Calkins is the commissioner. He co uh, he co-manages a team with Scott Barrett, and um, and T.J. was just like, guys, we're not going to make a ruling until the NFL rules, until we know. Because again, out. like again, there. There's a chance, and I don't know what the I don't know what percentage of the chance is, is, but like so, the league where you're in, where they declare themselves champions, there's a chance this game plays, guys. It, I, I think it's unlikely at this point, but there is a chance this game plays at some point in the future. And at that point, then, well, then you want to see how it plays out. You'd want to see how Joe Burrow and Joe Mixon do. I'm in another league where same thing, where I'm down 32. I have Evan McPherson and Jamar Chase. 
going against a, a, somebody that has uh, Dawson Knox. I think it's unlikely that I would have won that game, too. He had Daniel Jones. I had Saquon Barkley. There you go. The Giants, you know, what are you going to do? Um, and Ramondre Stevenson. Pretty much every superstar that, that disappointed in Week 17 I had on that team. But, um, but, but like, but let's see how let's see how the NFL handles this. It's interesting. Um, recommend if you, you can find it online. Uh, Mike Florio did an appearance on the Dan Patrick Show the other day, talking through some of the scenarios. He talked about the idea, and you know, very. But he talked about the fact that like there's a chance that they don't play this game, and uh, they decide to use winning percentage, which is that was the plan the NFL had. Uh, two years ago, when they thought game, teams were going to miss games because of COVID, that ended up not happening. But that was the that, that was the plan in place, you know. Or or there's a chance that you know, as you mentioned, you know, maybe they decide to play it in Week 19. That's the only game in Week 19. The playoffs get pushed back one week, um, and you you know, and you you get rid of the Pro Bowl week, right? And you just go from the conference championship into the Super Bowl. Yeah, I think it's all on the table, and obviously we just have to see what happens. My guess would be that the game just doesn't get played, and we just we just go on, and the Bills finish thirteen and three or whatever they finish. Yeah, you'd enter some conversations about everybody else having two weeks of rest, and these two highly competitive teams then have one week of rest, so they need to work with the teams. Obviously, they will, but ultimately, it does seem like uh, this game might not get played, or realistically, won't get played, and the fact that we'll lean on the strength of schedule for the playoff yeah. seating. Yeah, and and. Right. I mean, there's all there's all sorts of things. I mean, this is this is with no knowledge whatsoever. This is just me trying to be a logical adult. But I I think that if I were in the NFL's position, which is just an awful untenable position and it's unprecedented. And again, all of it is insignificant compared to what uh, the Hamlin family is going through. But I think if I was in this position and I was making the decision for the NFL, I would I would sort of say, like, you know what, I want to kind of pardon the pun, punt the decision. Let's let week 18 play out and let's see if this game would matter because based on the results of week 18, there's a chance that it doesn't matter what the results are, I believe, of that game. Yeah, I think it's going to matter for the two versus the three seed potentially, but yeah, there are. I think there are ways it can shake out where it doesn't matter as much, but yeah, at the same time, like, I don't think you want these teams playing extra football. Like, I just, yeah, I just don't think that they're going to play, but We'll see. We'll see what happens. All yeah, right. we, hundred percent. We will. We will. Uh, we will see what happens. But what we know is, at least as of now, and it's a, it's a developing story. As of now, they're going to play football this weekend, and um, all the teams are going to play, including the Bills and the Bengals. That's the expectation as of now. Um, so, we will so, wait and see. But um, so we're going to we're going to talk fantasy we football. Are. We'll We'll talk at the rest of the show. We'll talk at the rest of the week. And, of course, Sunday morning fantasy football pregame will be right here on Peacock and CNBC at noon Eastern. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll get you set for, uh, for Week 18. And Week 18 also, a, um, you know, it's a, it's a good week for DFS and for prop betting. Something we did mention at the top of the show, you know, some really good news to come out of this really tough time is DeMar Hamlin's toy drive GoFundMe page right now, yep. as you see it right here on the screen. Over $6 million, just an incredible uh, moment of everybody coming together and supporting a charity that the goal at one point was $2,500. It has now surpassed $6 million. That is DeMar Hamlin's Chasing M's Foundation community toy drive that can be found on GoFundMe rising by the hour. And you know what's incredible, Connor, is look underneath that number, 203000 yeah. Donations. I mean, that's the thing. Like, it's not like just a couple of, you know, you know, teams saying, "Hey, we'll donate a million dollars or whatever." Like, over two hundred, yeah, over two hundred thousand people have made an individual donation uh, to the Chasing M's Foundation Community Toy Drive in honor of Demar Hamlin and his family and team. So, uh, just an amazing, incredible outpouring of support. All right, with that, we will take our first break. But when we're back, we'll be doing keep it open or close it out, basically looking at who will start and sit for the final week of the regular NFL season. Peacock has the most live sports of any streaming service. Watch live games and events from the Premier League, NASCAR, the PGA Tour, every Sunday night football game, and so much more. It's all streaming on Peacock. Keep it open. Or close it out, fellas. It's been going on most of the year. Essentially, we are down to this final question. Are you sticking with these players for the final week 
of the season, or you closing it out, put on their bench, giving up on them in the final moment. Barry, let's start right here with Justin Herbert. Herbert has not had the fantasy season that a lot of people hoped for when they drafted him as a top five quarterback off the board. He has now had three straight games under 17 fantasy points. Keeping it open or closing this one out at the end? I'm hopefully closing it out. I mean, he's my quarterback 11 this week, so outside my top 10, I have him as a borderline starter in a 12-team league. Look, uh, like to your point, two of the last three games, he's got zero touchdown passes. If you watch those games, when they get in close recently, they've been running the ball significantly. Their, their red zone rush percentage in close over the last um, couple of weeks has been among the leaders in the league. Now, you're seeing, I mean, like, so, okay, he threw 40 42 times against the Titans, but as you see it there in your screen, under 32 pass attempts each of the last two weeks, under 240 passing yards each of the last two weeks. Okay, yes, fine, he, he threw two touchdown passes against the Rams, but still, in a game in which they, they you know, uh, they played really well, 21 of 28, 212 yards, two touchdowns. Again, you know, Eckler's just on a, on a, a roll here, and the Broncos... The Broncos, after two weeks ago, just looking like they've given up on the season, um, they showed up last fired week coach against bump. The, right, fi- exactly, it. exactly. They fired Hackett, and they showed up last week against the Chiefs and played really well. So my, it doesn't feel like Denver, who so far this season gives up the second fewest fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks, doesn't feel like they're just playing out the string. Herbert makes me nervous, guys. Yeah, I think. I think the world has kind of beaten Brandon Staley down. He used to be the the ultimate aggressive coach with his fourth down decision making, with throwing the ball. Now they're getting more conservative, more conservative on fourth down, more conservative in the red zone to your point, Matthew. And look, the thing is, though, that the Chargers need this game because they want to get the five seed. You'd much rather play Jacksonville or Tennessee than have to go to Buffalo or Cincinnati. So they need to win this game. So I think that they, they will be playing to win and they will be throwing the ball. The thing with Herbert is, like, why doesn't he run the ball That's anymore? the biggest question. He has 148 me. rushing yards on the season. He had more than double that last season. That's the thing that's really gone from his game that was going to be, I think, the extra fantasy value. It makes me wonder if the rib injury from early in the season has just yeah. completely taken that away. And sometimes it's not up to the player. The coaching staff might say, hey, listen, we can't afford to lose you going forward. You're just not going to be able to run as much as you normally can. So you have to wonder if that's lingering and it's led to Herbert having a pretty slow fantasy stretch here for quite some time. Jay, let's start with you on Ramondre Stevenson here. A slow two weeks for Ramondre Stevenson. Damian Harris Harris back in the fold. The backfield that typically in New England is never fun to deal with. Ramondre's been great this year, but right now, where are you at with keeping it open or closing it out on on one of the fantasy studs of the year? I think you're still keeping it open because of the underlying talents. A difficult matchup against Buffalo, but yeah, everything's trending in the wrong direction for Ramondre. Obviously, he has the, the fumble against Cincinnati, which is so yeah. key. And also, the other thing is the receiving work just isn't there. It's two receptions a game, two receptions yeah. a game. He was up far beyond that previously. But I still think you trust in the talent. And I think that, you, for the most part, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better flex option than Ramondre Stevenson. Yeah, you're certainly nervous. I mean, again, he played 57% of the snaps last week, to your point about Damian Harris being back in the lineup. Um, 15 or fewer touches in back-to-back games. And the weird part is, to your point, like the the – the calling card for Romandre Stevenson was also the passing game usage, and that just hasn't been there. Having said that, in a game in which they're likely trailing against the Bills, he is the passing down back. They'll prefer him to. Um, they would prefer him to Damian Harris in that role. Um, the previous two weeks, off the top of my head, they played obviously Miami this week, and then Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Previously. So, um, look, he's my running back twenty-two. So a guy that I had as a locked-in RB1 is now basically a high-end flex or a low-end RB2 in a 12-team league. So I'm reluctantly keeping it open, but I'm lowering expectations, and I would not be scared if I had another player with a good matchup or somebody else that was sort of borderline. I wouldn't be scared to bench him. Like, I don't think he's a must-start. I'm, again, reluctantly keeping it open, but I don't think he's a must-start in this matchup given the, the recent usage. And also just to the eye test, Feels like he's wearing down a little bit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like I he just know. hasn't it's, been yeah. hasn't been as explosive as he was earlier in the year. Yeah, he had a heavy workload for a couple months there, and I agree. He, it feels like he's kind of nursing something throughout the week. Let's stay with the backfield here, Barry, and look at David Montgomery. I mean, we saw Justin Fields run wild for a quarter, and then it feels like teams can kind of sell out against the Bears' rushing attack. David Montgomery, I think what has to be concerning is, though, the usage isn't even there as well. Yeah, I mean, look, this is a game – I mean, understand – I know last week, and 
people were like, hey, what happened? And they're like, it's Detroit. And, the, you know, the over-under was, what, or a 52 and a half or whatever it was. And it was supposed to be, like, one of the high scorings. It was. I mean, just it was all on Detroit's yes. side. The ball. It was to catch the over right. by themselves. But, but I think what people forget is how good the Lions' run defense has been over the last two months. Even though Carolina ran all over them, the fact of the matter is is that this was a tough matchup for David Montgomery, and a lot of Justin Fields' rushing in this game came on, like, just scrambles yes. and not necessarily designed runs. And so... Ideally, ideally you're not starting him just because, again, Herbert's playing. Herbert's back and played a lot of snaps last week, and again, game script could go against them, right? I mean, like Minnesota, Minnesota really wants to win this game too. There, and obviously, the, the defense isn't going to help him out at all, right? So there's a there's a chance that they just sort of bail here. He's my running back 25, so he's literally like a mid tier flex. Like he's, um, I am. So in a ten team league, I'm definitely closing it out. In a twelve team league, I'm I'm reluctantly, reluctantly, I guess, you know, potentially keeping it open, right? I mean, here's the if there's positives. Vikings top ten in terms of most fantasy points allowed to opposing running backs. When they played in week five, he went four for sixty two in the passing game, which was his season high in receiving. But again, like Herbert's gonna be there. Game script isn't like I'd be looking elsewhere if I could. Is that like, I feel like I'm really fence sitting, but I just, I'm being honest. Like, it's an awkward one because the low snap rate, that's the concern, is the season low snap rate. Because previous to that, the usage was pretty consistent. He's guys getting 14, 15 carries a game. But the other thing, too, is that Minnesota are playing all of their guys. It seems like the line jump from Minnesota minus one to Minnesota minus five and a half. It's huge. So jump. MGM thinks that they're going to be playing their guys. And it's a weird one because. I would rather lose the game if I'm Minnesota and just play the Giants at home in week one of the playoffs and then go on the road to San Francisco as opposed to potentially getting the two seed, which only happens if San Francisco lose to Arizona, which is very unlikely. And then I don't think Minnesota wants to play Green Bay in week one of the playoffs. So it's a bit of a weird one, but I think they'll play their guys. It, it, it is. I, I think so too. But I mean, I mean, Kevin O'Connell, again, first year head coach, and he could be... <clears throat> And it's always they, they play games, right? But, I mean, I think the quote, I'm paraphrasing, and if I get this wrong, don't kill me, guys. But I feel like he said something to the effect of, I saw the clip from the press conference, he says, like, no, we, we got a shot at the two seed. We're playing to win. Yeah. Now, playing to win doesn't mean you play all your starters. I mean, you, you, you're still Everybody plays try. to win. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, you play to win the game. Uh, but, but, yes, it does, to your point, like, you know, our friends here at MGM, it, it feels like they're going to be playing their starters, and so game script could be negative here. So, again, running back 25, I'm, I'm closing it out. There yeah. you go. I'm, there you know, I'm, 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 you know yeah. screw it. I'm just, you He's know, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop night, waffling. I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm going to close it out unless you're, you know. Now you feel better, really right? Stuck. You feel better about closing yeah. it out. If you say you kept it open, away. it would have been. I walked away, which, yeah. by the way, in Vegas, that's the most <laughs> important thing, knowing when to walk yes, away very is very cool. important. Ask anyone that was with us last night. <laughs> Looking at, at Omnia, <laughs> shout out to my guy, Chris Trillo. <laughs> Looking over at the wide receivers, I feel like this guy is Mr. Keep It Open or Close It Out. I can't tell you how many times we've had this discussion with Juju Smith-Schuster right here. Uh, kind of a slow stretch for Juju Smith-Schuster, under 30 receiving yards in back-to-back -back games right now. But typically, Barry, he was pretty reliable throughout the year. Always it felt like he had a decent floor. So where are you at in the final week of the season for Juju? Yeah, I'm keeping it open. I mean, I think he's, again, he's a risky wide receiver three, but like that, literally the textbook definition of Juju Smith-Schuster. He's on the road at Las Vegas. This is a 52 and a half over under. We expect a lot of fireworks to be, uh, a lot of scoring to be in this game. The Raiders under Jarrett Stidham showing signs of life, so they may be able to keep uh, keeping up with the Chiefs as well. And so uh, the Raiders, who are a bottom 10 pass defense over the last month, I just, I'm just i going to bet on Juju Smith-Schuster. Again, it's the Chiefs, so you just never know. But I think you just want a part of that passing offense. Yeah, and I think Juju has become the emblem of do you hit on 16, do you start Juju Smith-Schuster. And I am starting Juju Smith-Schuster just because the Raiders' pass defense – there's just no hope there. Like, there's, no. it's just, it's such a bad unit. Now they've lost Denzel Perryman, Chandler Jones are out. A really bad unit gets even worse. They couldn't do anything against Brock Purdy and San Francisco. They could not stop those guys. Also, I, I don't really believe in Jared Stidham, to be honest. I think Nick right. Bosa came out and he said, yeah, we might not have taken him seriously enough. And it certainly looked like it. So I think the Chiefs are going to blow them out. I think there'll be lots of scoring. Mahomes, I mean, now they're playing for the one seed. 
And Mahomes, I think, wraps up MVP, and I think Juju will get in the end zone. Speaking of good matchups, one more here. Zay Jones has that Tennessee secondary that's been Swiss cheese for much of the season right here. Um, Zay Jones, you know, it felt like leading up to the playoffs was one of the most untouchable wide receivers in fantasy. Now we kind of hit a skid here, Jay. But you have to trust Zay Jones right against this Tennessee defense. You do, keeping it open on Zay Jones. And the reason is I think there's a, a lot of cause to just throw out the last two weeks. One, Houston, they didn't really care. They got up so quickly in that game. They're thinking about the week after against Tennessee. So throw that out. And then the Jets game, which Rain. I know you watched very, very closely, uh, unfortunately. Um, I mean, there was weather. Uh, short it's week. A short week. It's an excellent Jets pass defense. And also, they were just they were nursing the lead the whole time. Peterson yeah. called that game pretty conservatively, not needing to go for it on fourth down. So prior to that, Zay Jones, his targets, 8, 12, 7, 14, 10. Like, he was a monster. And I think that will come back against the Titans pass defense, which is just, again, not quite Raiders level bad, but pretty bad. For the division. Uh, uh, that's the important thing, right? I mean, this is this game is for the division. Jaguars win this game. They're in the playoffs. They don't need help from anyone else. It is literally win and in for Tennessee and Jacksonville in this game. And so they're going to be going all out. And I think in terms of how do you attack the Tennessee Titans, it's through the air. Over the last month, no team in the NFL has given up more passing yards per game than the Tennessee Titans. For the season, no team in the NFL has given up more fantasy points to opposing wide receivers than the Tennessee Titans. So 100% keeping it open on Zay Jones. They're going to go full seam ahead. And, yeah, I mean, I think he's I think he's a, you know, I'm definitely keeping it open on Zay Jones. I think he's a good start this week. Yep. The last thing here is Doug Peterson's a really, really good coach. It's not going to be a Mike McCarthy situation of running Travis Etienne for two yards of carry, first, second down, try to establish the run. Peterson will abandon the run. He will throw the ball against Tennessee. He'll do what's best for his team, and Zay Jones will benefit. Uh, this is a massive moment for Jacksonville as a franchise, and I think they're going to come out swinging. I think Trevor Lawrence will be ready to go. I've believed in them all year, and I've never wavered. Oh my, that's, that's... my swag, you are. My swag, you are. Let's my go. Duval! <laughs> Right. Massive, massive moment. We've got a for big America. reception in Vegas. Yeah, there the Duval Show. <laughs> All right. You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tell you right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm going to uh, get off this. When I get off this, I'm literally gonna walk. I'm literally gonna walk to the uh, walk here and bet. You know, bet the Jaguars money line. Yeah. Okay. By the way, well, by the way, they're six and a half point favorites in this one, which is shocking to me. I guess I would assume that's because Josh Dobbs it's is starting the Josh for Dobbs Tennessee. Factor. Yeah. Yeah. I just. I mean. But there people, you go. Josh Dobbs was. He looked okay. He still wasn't very good against the Cowboys. Like, and nor you know should what? he have been. Like, he's you know what? Listen, I'm not going to waver. Basically. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give me the Jags minus six and a half. I'm I was going to say, gonna bet him to cover. It was not a really bold call saying you're going to walk over that terminal over there and bet, yeah. bet minus two seventy five. I didn't realize it had gone into six and a half. <laughs> yeah. I, right. So yeah, I I'm think whatever. the Jags. Whatever. I'm, the Jags I'm not on the swag yours. Yeah. Go swag we're yours. going to break so Barry can go to the kiosk, but he yeah. will be back when we're back because it's time when we're back for our last waiver wired of the season. Final waiver wired of the season here, guys. It's been a long, long road, but for the maniacs that are playing for week 18, time to get into who maybe they want to pick up or look at it, right, Barry, from a daily fantasy perspective as well. Yeah, 100%. And the other thing is, by the way, is like just be we're giving you options in case you need them, but the truth of the matter is, is that if you're in a two week final, if you're playing in week 18, you know, maybe your league decided to go. I've seen, heard of some leagues that decided to throw out Week 17 because of everything that's going on and just play their final in Week 18. I've heard of some leagues doing that as well. So chances are you're dancing with who brought you, as it were. But, yes, if you need some help, here are some guys that we think will have uh, – increased value this week i think as well it's an interesting week 18 where normally there are more teams who have nothing to play for this week almost every team has something yeah. to play for who's in like the playoff mix as a, it's just the giants who are probably going to rest guys and we'll get into that uh and then the bucks are locked in as well but for the most part all these teams right. have something to play for all right, all right so let's get right into the running backs here and start with tyler algier guys this is somebody i really liked in last year's draft he was my uh, rb5 only behind damian pierce Fell to the fifth round. I looked around and said, am I the idiot? I don't know. But he's looked pretty good for Atlanta so far. He's available in 35% of leagues right now, uh, coming off a week where he had over 16 points. Barry. Yeah, he's taken over this backfield. 20 touches now in back-to-back -back games, over 95 yards from scrimmage in three straight as well. And he scored two rushing touchdowns in the last three games. That was always one of the issues with Algier was that he wasn't getting – and he, it was Cordero Patterson when they got in close. And so they're using him in this new look Desmond Ritter offense. Not really new look. It's just more efficient. Um, but, you know, and to your point, normally you'd be like, oh, but Tampa Bay, that's a tough matchup. 
maybe not this week because they might be sitting everyone or at least a, a decent amount of their starters. What's happened to this guy? Because for three months, he was the most uninspiring running back in the league. Every game was 16 carries for 50 yards and like a 30% chance at a touchdown. Now this guy's running angry. He looks like, da like peak Damian Pierce from earlier in the season. He just looks like a monster out there. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what's happened, but he's a, a locked-in RB2. Well, the new quarterback can throw the ball you know, 10 to 15 yards downfield. And when Mariota, Mariota was there, you could just yeah. sell out against whoever the, bat the running right. back was. So I think that's a big part of it as well. He might be their future Cordero Patterson going into next year. But if you're in a bind, maybe he's available in your league this week. He's out there in about 35%, so probably Pretty not well a ton. Marked. But, yep. you know, every once in a while, like so in some leagues where teams aren't paying attention, you know, like once they fall out, like – it's just worth seeing if he is out there. I just want to mention it's only 35%, though. This next one, a uh, much higher availability rate. Zach Moss, 54%. He's got Houston. Not a crazy Week 17, Barry, but still a guy that we think will get a decent workload. He's had at least 70 rushes in two of the last three yards. Not the most efficient guy, but he is getting the volume on a team that doesn't want to let Nick Foles throw. They want to run the ball. They've been doing that under Jeff Saturday. Each of the last three games, he's played at least 60% of the snaps, and now he gets Houston again. I mean, like, we've talked about this all season long, but the Texans... You know, they allow the most fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. They're one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. And, in fact, in just the last four games, they've given up seven rushing touchdowns. And so, you know, we would expect Zach Moss. I think Zach Moss has a decent chance at falling into the end zone in this one. And I think he's going to get 15 touches and a decent shot at, like, 75 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, what a great game. Texans, Colts. Colts, two and a half point favorites. Toilet they get a game script. It's a big one for the number one overall pick. It is. And it looks like it's going to be Sam Ellinger starting with Foles banged up. So, yeah, I don't think you want to expose Sam Ellinger too much and have him throwing 50 times. So, it, doesn't it feel like a game where, like, Zach Moss has, like, 150 yards and two touchdowns and just, like, wins a random league against the Texans' run defense? Massive DFS got the performance. Number one pick there. There, there have been a number over the years. There have been a number of random week 18 yes. huge fantasy performances from non-stars that have helped people win their leagues is Kenyon Drake is he the famous is he a famous Kenyon one? Drake yeah. is one of them Joe McKnight from the <laughs> oh Jets God. remember, remember that that's uh, yeah but uh Joe McKnight had yeah. like one of the all-time great yes. last week of the season performances for the Jets uh but yeah so I do think Zach Moss is you know a viable uh you know I've been running back 30 this week but again in a week where everyone's playing but yeah I mean if you're desperate, you could do worse than Zach Moss. Jay, during keep it open or close it out, we talked about Ramondre Stevenson because Damian Harris is back in the picture right here. 52% availability right now. They do see Buffalo, though, which has to give you a little concern if you pick him up. I think Damian Harris is just a wet blanket, isn't he? Because he's not going to provide value himself. All he's going to do is kill Ramondre Stevenson's value a little bit. So not that much interest in Damian Harris. I mean, he has the upside to potentially break one. He did have big games earlier in the season when he was getting a decent amount of carries. Think back to the Green Bay game where he went 18 for 86 and a touchdown, but I don't really want that much to do with Damian Harris. I think Ramondre is still the guy you want. He's got no passing game usage, yeah. so he really needs a touchdown to pay off. Like, didn't get a touchdown last week, and so he finished with eight fantasy points. Having said that, he actually, against Miami last week, his first game back, he outcarried Ramondre Stevenson as well. He had a season high in snap percentage. As it gets colder, they just, as it gets colder, and because Ramondre may be banged up in a way that we're not aware of. They may be wanting to lean on Damian Harris. Now, game script may get away from them, and they can't, but there's a chance he falls in the end zone. Look, he's my running back 46 this week. Okay. I mean, like, I'm damning with faint praise, right? I mean, like, it's like if you need somebody who's, you know, going to get double-digit touches and qualifies at running back, Damian Harris will probably get double-digit touches in this one and qualifies at running back. Yeah, we've seen the Patriots go up to Buffalo in the winter before and take the ball out of Matt yeah. Jones' hands, so that's, that's where you're – hoping for yep and in, winning in, in for the Patriots so yes. they'll be going all out oh yeah absolutely one more on the running backs list 88 percent availability for Jalen Warren who had a finish a sneaky top 20 running back finish last week Barry yeah he did you know he's now had 12 12 more touches in two of the last three games he's played 40 percent uh, of snaps in two of the last four uh, you know and and against Baltimore where they just didn't really feel like they could move the ball through the air all that much except until that last drive like, they, you know, they like Warren, and obviously Pickett, who's struggled to get the ball downfield somewhat this year on a consistent level, likes dumping it off to Jalen Warren. They play the Browns this week, who have allowed the third most fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. Browns played pretty good defense against my commanders last weekend, but 
the expectation here is that because the Browns have a good defense, you could see some more dump offs to Jalen Warren. Again, he's my running back forty. So I mean, like we're we're sifting through sort of the uh, the you know the lower end guys here, but I, I prefer him to Damian Harris this week just to give a, one comparison. Yeah, I think the Browns' defense has gotten a lot better uh, just across the board. And yes, the rushing defense is still a problem, but the pass defense has gotten excellent. The Sean is getting better each week as well. I don't I don't really understand why the Browns are plus one twenty five underdogs here, two and a half point dogs. I think they're going to win this game. I just think they're better than the Steelers at this point. Let's jump into the wide receivers and start with Drake London, who has looked a lot better with Desmond Ritter under center. Now, Drake London's only available in 32% of leagues. But, Barry, where does London come in for you right now in your rankings? Is wide receiver 33, double-digit yeah. targets right in, three, in, in each of the last four games. So, I mean, he's, suddenly he's getting the volume that we saw at the beginning of the year. And, uh, with, you know, it's the old joke, right? You know, find somebody who looks at you the way that Desmond Ritter is looking at Drake London. Since Desmond Ritter's become the starting quarterback, of the Atlanta Falcons, Drake London has a 33% target share. And so, you know, in a uh, in a matchup that, you know, again, doesn't scare you because we expect the Buccaneers to rest a lot of starters here, I do think he's a viable wide receiver three, wide receiver four, kind of in that range. Like I said, wide receiver 33 for me, but at least 70 yards in three of the last four years, the rookie coming on at the right time. I mean, yeah, he's averaging like 10 targets per game the past month, and it doesn't matter what kind of offense you're in, really. If you're getting 10 targets a game, then you're very fantasy viable. Yeah, I think with Drake London, what you're looking at right now, too, is keeper league potential. He's a guy that's a penciled in wide receiver one, but nobody knows who his quarterback is officially going to be next year. Back to the Patriots offense. It is a waiver wire week for that New England offense. Jacoby Myers available in only 34% of leagues. He's got the Bills. The Bills secondary um, not invincible, I would say. They've dealt with, obviously, uh, a lot of different things this year. But for Myers, is he somebody that you could pick up and use as a flex this week, Barry? I'm at wide receiver 36, so he's like a mid-tier wide receiver four. But it, to the extent that you want to invest in the Patriots passing game, he's the guy that I feel best about. He's had at least 16 fantasy points now in back-to-back -back games. And you would figure that in this particular game that, you know, game script would dictate that uh, Buffalo, that New England is going to have to throw to keep up with the Bills. And so uh, Myers is somebody that Mac Jones looks for a decent amount. Second most targets in a game this week was last week. Yep. New England is going to have to throw is a kind of terrifying sentence. Um, That's it, something they wanted. It enlivens Matt Patricia, and we don't want that. Oh, can we keep this team out of the playoffs? I don't want to watch Mac Jones go to Buffalo in week one of the playoffs and have this game again repeated. I think Jacoby Myers has been probably part of the – Maybe the two strangest plays of the year with obviously the the lateral disaster, which I don't think I we've come up with a, a name for yet that has really stuck. Yeah. Heaving Las Vegas, I think, was... Heaving Las Vegas is pretty good. That's a pretty good one. Um, lateral damage, I think, was another one that was thrown I'm around. But in any case, and then also has the disaster ridiculous... Disaster in Las Vegas or something like that. The Las Vegas disaster, yeah. Also has the ridiculous touchdown against the Bengals. I mean, he does have a connection with Mac Jones for whatever that is worth, so I do think he is viable and has a chance to get in the end zone. Back to the rookie wide receiver pool. We started with Drake London. Now we look at Jahan Dotson. Uh, kind of been a touchdown machine for your commanders here, Barry. 59% availability. That surprises me a little bit for Jahan Dotson. Yeah, it does. And he's had at least seven targets now in three of the last four games. Double fantasy points when he played these Cowboys again in week number four. Taylor Heineke is going to start for my commanders this week. They're going to go back to him off of Carson Wentz. And I think that's good for Dotson. I mean, he a little bit more gunslingery with Heineke, and he obviously he had success with Wentz, but he's also had success with Taylor Heineke as well. Look, since week 14, it's worth noting the Cowboys have allowed the fourth most receiving yards to wide receivers. We would expect game script to, you know, like they're going to chuck it a little bit. I don't think they'll be able to run that effectively. Um, so, you know, and Dallas wants to win this game. So, yeah, I do think Dotson, who's honestly throughout the stats, like kid's just a baller. He's just a baller. We need to get that team a quarterback. And I know I've been saying that for 100 years for the Washington Commanders and their previous named iterations, but with McLaurin, with Dotson, with yeah. that defense, that team needs a quarterback. Yeah, yeah. really yeah. incredible wide receiver duo. This one, the, one of the bigger surprises at the end of the stretch here in Richie James, available in 82% of leagues, kind of a lifelong special teams player, now a focal point of the New York Giants passing attack, Jay. Can you buy into Richie James being this effective the final week of the season? Can't play him. Got to have him in Cotton Wool for the playoffs. He can't go into the playoffs without Richie James. He's amazing. Uh, I don't... Yeah, look, I think the Giants are the most likely team to be resting guys. Like the line there now is Eagles minus 14, wow. uh, which is massive. And I 
think maybe not even big enough yet. So I don't think that we're going to see a full complement of Richie James. I mean, obviously they're going to skew towards resting Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley and Dexter Lawrence and et cetera, but I'm not sure that it's going to be a full complement of snaps for Richie James. Yeah, exactly. That's the concern. It's just the playing time. But yeah, I mean, he's their slot guy. He's been targeted on 71% of his targets from the slot since week 14. He's had seven or more targets in three of the past four games. And so, I mean, like, we like Richie James last week. I would like him this week if we knew they were going to play him against Philadelphia. But my expectation is limited snaps for the starters on the Giants. So, Hard to trust him uh, this week, but we wanted to mention he comes in at wide receiver 39. Like, he'll play some, so, I mean, you you could do worse, but, like, I prefer Dotson, who's a wide receiver 35. I prefer Myers at wide receiver 36. Like, the guys we've talked about earlier in the show. So I'm assuming the same questions kind of linger for our last guy in Isaiah Hodgins. He's available in, in most leagues. He's got four receiving touchdowns in his last five games. But, guys, the golden question has to be how much are these guys going to play? How much are they going to throw with their starting quarterback? Yeah, and the other thing is, is that Philadelphia needs this game. They have oh, yeah. to win this game to become the number one seed, to clinch the number one seed throughout the playoffs. So, And, and you think about Philadelphia, their perimeter defense is really, really good. Like – the, that's why Richie James would be the most interesting if I had to start a Giants wide receiver is just because at least he plays the slot and he would avoid Bradbury and Slay, yep. which and Isaiah Avante Hodgins... Avante Maddox is out as right. well, their slot guy. Correct. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, so Hodgins has been a great story. Like, he's got four touchdowns in his last five games, but... Um, It'd be hard to trust him in this one. Yeah, I think even less so than Richie James, just because Hodgins has been so touchdown dependent as well, yeah. whereas James is getting more targets. Guys, as we transition to quarterbacks, just got news in my ear. Justin Fields will be out this oh. week. Nathan Peterman is in. Nathan so, Peterman's music in Las so, Vegas. So if you were hoping for Justin Fields helping you out this week, you might want to listen up here as we start with Brock Purdy. See, and, and this, is, this is one of the frustrating things. Like, I'm at BetMGM. Like, I'm at the BetMGM casino, right? But I'm on air. So I literally can't put down my microphone and go bet uh, the Vikings minus five and a half. Oh, it just you went know. to seven and a half as D we were talking. Yeah. Of course, exactly. <laughs> you missed your moment, mate. Exactly. It's now right at there. 13 and a half. It is flying as you are sitting here. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> looked at me like, oh, no, I really? I mean, Nathan Peterman is, you know. Is a downgrade from Justin Fields. They the immortal are, uh, Nathan Peterman. Unbelievable. Yeah. Good for him. So, so interceptions. Brock Purdy here, guys, available in over half of leagues. He's got Arizona. And Brock Purdy, been Mr. Consistency, consistency in fantasy so far. You know what he has? Since taking over for Jimmy Garoppolo, yeah. he's averaging 17.1 fantasy points per game. He's had multiple touchdown passes in all five games. It's a good matchup against Arizona, who gives up the ninth most fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. And Jay and I have talked about this all the time. If the Niners win this game and Kyle Shanahan's gone 6-0 and as a head coach, Jay? He's got to be coach of the year. If you go 6-0 and with Brock Purdy, and, like, Brock Purdy's being good, but he's being good because Kyle Shanahan is scheming up George Kittle wide open over the middle for 45-yard yeah. touchdowns. I think with Purdy, it's interesting because I think we all thought that he would be, you know, be the Trent Dilfer kind of role, like game manager, not do anything. Uh, Purdy does a lot. Purdy's really high variance, which I think is good for fantasy because he throws deep touchdown passes. He also throws the ball up for grabs a lot and hasn't been caught, getting caught as much as it should be. But fantasy-wise, he is high variance, and I think he will provide value in a game where they're favored by 14 points. He has a good offensive line. He has great skilled players around him in, in Kittle and Ayuk and obviously Christian McCaffrey. Yep. And so even without Debo Samuel, like he's been putting up points. And so, um, you know, the concern is only is it's like do they have to go run heavy because Arizona doesn't put up much of a fight against the Niners. So again, he comes in at QB thirteen. But yes, if you're looking around and you're you know you need a high end QB two, that's what I think Brock Purdy is. I think he's more of a floor play than an upside play. Yep, we might also see Debo Samuel in this game, and Debo is the ultimate dump a screen pass off to him, and he takes it 70 yards. thousand percent. Jay, what do the Niners have to do for Kyle Shanahan to win Coach of the Year at this point? Because it's it's been a pretty open race most of the year. Shanahan came in a little bit late, but this is just absurd what he's doing with Purdy. I think so, particularly given that Sirianni has lost the past two weeks, and I just think that Nick Sirianni going 0-2 with his backup quarterback, Gardner Minshew, who should be better than Brock Purdy, and the fact that Shanahan is likely going to end the season on a 10-game winning streak, 
gets the two seed, goes 6-0 and with Brock Purdy. His third string quarterback. His third, he's had started three quarterbacks. It's just, seventh round pick. You put Connor Rogers in there and they're just going to keep rolling There's off a wins. Chance. Like, it's There's unbelievable. A chance. That he got signed to the practice squad about an hour <laughs> yes. ago. Yeah, I will be leaving after this. You guys are on your own tomorrow. So, yeah. all right. One I think it's, it's Shanahan versus Dable, and I would excuse And Shanahan. by the way, and the odds for Shanahan is he's at what? He's plus 200. So he's an underdog to Nick Sirianni, and I just I don't agree with that. Yeah. I think Shanahan's got the better case. Yeah, well, we like what? the, uh, we like the better bet. Yep. Yeah. All right. One more on quarterbacks. Jarrett Stidham. Jarrett Stidham coming Start out of him nowhere. Or Stidham. So, God bless. Yeah, yeah, wow. That's it. That's, uh, you can sign off on that one. He was actually saying that at Omnia all last night to anyone who would listen. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Our waitress didn't seem to get it. No. It's all right. Uh, anyway, uh, Stidham. Here's the positives of Jared Stidham. I thought he looked good last week. I mean, you know, like, like he made some legit throws. It also helps when you have Devontae Adams, and as long as you get it within his area code, Devontae Adams is coming down with it. Like, there were a couple of throws where you're just like, well, that was, oh, oh, never mind. Oh, first down. Devontae Adams well, is no, just. the case for Derek Carr, by the way. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a good matchup against Kansas City, right? I mean, again, Kansas City uh, teams have to throw against the Chiefs, right? Again, we talked about this. Uh, the Chiefs are seven and a half point uh, favorites in this one. The over under is 52 and a half. We expect a lot of points to be scored here. So Stidham should have to throw 34 pass attempts last week against the 49ers. Looked better than I think a lot of people expected. And now he gets the Chiefs, who have allowed over 23 fantasy points to quarterbacks in two of the last four games. Both games were against Russell Wilson, by the way. Not exactly a quarterback that you'd expect to put up massive fantasy points every single week. Yep. Vikings Bears line just moved to eight. By the way, it's going to get bigger as well. It's going to close ten. I think minus eight is a good is a good bet still. I think with Jared Stidham, yeah, I think that last week was just so wonky from the 49ers defense. Like that wasn't the 49ers defense. No. They just did not show up for that game at all. Outside of Nick Bosa, who was a monster, and I do think that with the Chiefs, they have so much to play for. They have the one seed. They need this game, and I think they'll be going all out. And it just. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it's just going to be two, three picks from Jared Stidham. He might provide fantasy value because he might have 300 yards and two touchdowns with those two or three picks, but I think it'll, it'll come down to earth a little bit. They should be in a throw script, and the good news is it'll be here in Vegas. He does not have to play outdoors in Kansas City, so that's a big positive for Stidham. Our final group here, guys, the tight ends. Boy, it has been some kind of waiver-wired year for the tight end position. We're going to start with Tyler Conklin. Sounds like Mike White is practicing this week. If you are looking at who his quarterback will be, Conklin's available in 71% of leagues. He's coming off a 14-point fantasy week, Barry. Yeah, he was on the love list last week. Again, talking about the usage, you, you, you prefer Mike White to be under center for the Jets. He's had at least six targets in three of the last five. And you think about this matchup with Miami, who allows the third most fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. Like, the run game has struggled for the Jets. Bam Knight has seemed to, you know... After that kind of, you know, quick shine there. He's the wheels kind of, are off the bandwagon. We are a little it's, more off the bandwagon as well. Michael Carter hasn't really picked sad. it up. The, the way they move the ball in this game is through the air. And so, yeah, I do think Conklin, who comes in at tight end 11 for me, is a viable streamer this week. Yeah. Jets passing offense is so weird at the moment. Like, how did they not score against that Seattle pass defense? who are missing their star safety and Ryan Neal as well. So... I don't know. I don't think you want to buy shares of this Jets offense, but with the usage that Conklin got last week, with the dearth of talent at the tight end position fantasy-wise, and also this Miami defense is really banged up. It's not just like it's not just Tua on the offense and Teddy Bridgewater. Like the defense with Xavier and Howard missed last week, Bradley Chubb missed last week. Like they are banged up, and so you will be able to, I think, move the ball if the Jets offense is functional enough. So I think Conklin is viable. A, a rookie tight end here in Trey McBride. It kind of makes you wonder why it took so long for Arizona to get him going even when Ertz was healthy. McBride available in almost every single league right now. He's coming off a 20-plus fantasy point week. Guys, this guy has a ton of talent as a pass catcher for the future. He really does. It's kind of a breakout game last week for Trey McBride, right? Targets, receptions, yards, they were all career highs last week. He had He's now had 50 receiving yards in two of the last three games. He's one of only two tight ends to have a 20-point game, uh, and that came last week. And so... You know, Trey McBride is a really talented guy. The downside of him is that they're playing the San Francisco 49ers in a game the Niners need to win. But when you think about, you know, we don't know if DeAndre Hopkins is going to play for the Cardinals in this one. And so, you know, look, he didn't do anything with him last week, but Greg Dorch got 10 targets as well. Like, the, they, the, um, they've used Marquise Brown there as well. Like, the way their offense is currently running is they like the middle of the field. They don't like to go outside the numbers that much. And so McBride, who's a big guy, like, 
I don't want to temper expectations. He's my tight end 21. I'm like trying to talk him up, but I mean, he's tight end 21. So like, let's, you know, let's not get crazy here, but uh, certainly he's an exciting dynasty asset. He's an exciting keeper league asset. And he's a touchdown dependent tight end too this week against the Niners. Yep. I'm mostly throwing out San Francisco's defensive performance against the Raiders. It was just too weird. It just doesn't make sense. They're not dealing with injuries or anything. I think they were just off and they just didn't show up for that game until they had to. So I think that they will show up at home in a game, to your point, Matthew, they have to win to get the two seed. So it's going to be tough sledding for that entire Arizona offense. You don't want you don't want to buy shares of that offense. All right, our last one on the tight end list, Albert Okawebunam, 90% availability, uh, has the Chargers this week. He finished as a top 10 tight end last week, Jay. Any hope for Albert O? No, I wouldn't have thought so. I don't really want to go down swinging if you're in a championship week in week 18 with, with Albert O. I mean, it was promising that he did have six targets. I mean, he does have talent. We thought that this guy was did have sleeper potential at the start of the year. He looked okay in that first game against the Seahawks and then just unsighted, unsighted. So, I mean, there is some potential, I guess, but you can't really bank on it. There's just not enough sample. Yeah, Aquabanam is my tight end 24, and I just wanted to prove that I could. It took me all season long, but, you know, I know how to That's pronounce his good. name. Like, yeah. um, I'm not sure what Connor was doing. Um, right. I didn't but, want to draw attention to it because okay. I know we had a, a Vita Veyer incident on the with Sunday pregame show. I've struggled with the name since he was a prospect <laughs> like seven years ago, so I've just, it's, I'm just it's, 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 year, it's yeah. taken me all year, but yeah, Aquabanam uh, is, you know, led all. Broncos pass catchers and receiving yards last week at Kansas City. If you want to hang your hat onto something, Greg Dulcich is on is on IR, like so he's going to be the starting tight end for the Broncos against the Chargers. But yes, it's it's Russell Wilson. It's a low volume offense. The Chargers, as we said, we we think the Chargers want to win this game. Like they're going to be trying as well. They've had a pretty good defense as well, and so. He's my tight end 24. Yep. He's on the streaming radar just like he's ranked this week. The, the one thing is Ross has looked better. He's looked a lot better. He played hard. He played, he's yes. played well in those two Kansas City games. I'm going to buy Russell Wilson shares. I think he comes back in a big way next year. I think he'll, he'll turn it around, not giving up on Ross. I think it depends on the quarterback. I, I think it depends on the head coach. They'll yeah. hire, but if I'm the Broncos organization, I think you have to, you, like you've committed a quarter of a billion dollars to this guy, or at least you're on the hook for... I think it's 145 that's yeah. guaranteed. It's a lot. He's there for a while. <laughs> yeah. The point is, is like you've got to find a quarterback. You've got to find a coach and you say, like, listen, fix Russ. Yes. That's your job. Like, I, like by the way, the people that own, we weren't planning on talking about this, but I'll just quickly go here. And I have, I know there's been a lot of rumors that Jim Harbaugh is going to leave Michigan and go, go to Denver. But if I'm the Bronco owners, like it's the, and they're the Walmart heirs, like they have more money than, you know, they're, very very wealthy like i think their net worth is they have more know. money than we spent at omnia last they, time they they do and that's Impressive saying something feet. um they uh if i'm them i'm just like back up the brakes truck for sean payton yeah for sure look yeah. we have all this you know like we've got russ can you fix russ like we've got a good defense he's bringing in vic fangio now i know vic fangio so maybe there's like a you know some <laughs> a weird it's a, situation we, right but i don't know i to me, that's what if I owned the Broncos and I had the kind of money that the Walton family does, like that's what yep. I would be doing. The biggest question will that will be what does he command in a trade? Because he is under contract with the Saints, Sean Payton. But if it's if they can figure out the draft assets to get him, that's the guy you go for, undoubtedly. I got an idea. I got an idea. Russell Wilson to the Saints <laughs> for Sean Payton. For Sean Payton, who says no. <laughs> there you go. I just solved everything. There you go. Uh, the Saints say no. Uh, yeah. You could win $100,000 by watching the Lions and the Packers on Sunday night. We'll explain how when we're back. The NFL season is winding down, but the NBC Sports Predictor app is still giving you a shot at winning $100,000 by entering Sunday Night 7's free contest between the Lions and the Packers. So if you don't have the NBC Sports Predictor app, go download it now. All right, let's get into some predict predictions, guys, for the SN7J. You are up first, and you have Aaron Rodgers passing yards. What range are you looking at for A-Rod? Yep, so I'm going 280-plus for A-Rod. Going out on a limb here. The numbers don't back this up. He's only done it once all year. I just think that win or go home against the Lions on Sunday Night Football on NBC, I just think that he will go off in a game where the total is 49. Uh, so do expect scoring. Lions have a good run defense, notwithstanding that weird game against Carolina. So I think they'll be throwing. I think Rodgers goes off. 
Uh, I'm going with the Aaron Jones thing, in, and uh, so I'm taking Aaron Jones here. By the way, I agree with you on Packers. At home, Lambeau, prime time, Lions secondary. He picks that apart, especially given how bad he was the last time. He remembers that as well. For Aaron Jones, I'm taking that 75 to 90 range. Look, Detroit has given up the second most rush yards per game in the last three weeks. But again, fewer than 20 touches in five of the last six. He feels like he's not 100% there. So give me that uh, that 75 to 90 range uh, against Detroit because of his passing game usage. Again, he's had over 100 yards from scrimmage in two of the last three. But I think the uh, Lions will play him tough. Give me 75 to 90. Guys, I'm looking at the sun god, Amon Ross St. Brown, receiving yards. And this is tough because could he see Jire Island? That's the big question that we have on this one. He's averaged about 71 receiving yards over his last three. I'll stay in that 60 to 74 yard range. I think they move him around enough that he won't be completely shut down. He's just too talented. So 60 to 74 receiving yards for Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah, it's it's. He, he's great, but we need some touchdowns, just fantasy-wise. Like, it's been tough. Stop with the obscure tight ends. Give me some Amon Ross St. Brown. All right, we will be back here tomorrow if we don't close at another club. For Jay Connor. I'm Matthew. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least – being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.